I'm Errol. Kyle Crane. This is my niece, Salier, and her son, Aaron. Do forgive Edward, but he's completely right to be worried. We're being pursued by some very ruthless men. There's something oddly familiar about you. There should be. The campaign spent a lot of money putting my face all over town. Of course, you're Errol Asani, governor of the province. Governor of nothing, but Rise has decided that any political figure is a threat to him. So he's ordered my execution. They nearly killed me once already. That's how I lost my leg. And it seems they haven't given up. A squad of his thugs has tracked me to my last safe house in the slabs. Edward was just there. He says they're searching the area. It's only a matter of time before they show up here. Uh, sounds like you got quite a problem. I would pay you very well to resolve it. Hey, you know, people say that a lot to me. Trust me. What I can offer you can't be found anywhere else, at any price. And I'll think about it. on the radio.
Kareem, it's Crane. Drop your weapon or you're dead. What the hell's your problem? This doesn't concern you. Sorry, Kareem, but Errol Asani is my concern. You're working for him? <laughs> you're a fool. I was his bodyguard, okay? After everything got fucked up and they built the wall, we got overrun. He got bitten on the leg. I took him to Randall, the only doctor I knew in the slums, and we cut it off. Clean. It was the only way. He would have turned if we hadn't done it. But the stubborn bastard never forgave us. So, we parted ways. So why are you trying to track him down now? Early on, the authorities evac all the political bigwigs out of the zone. Errol told us there was a chopper on the way to take us out with him. Then he got bitten, and with all the shit that happened after that, we missed the flight. But after you turned on the transmitter, we heard Errol asking for evac. And a couple of days ago, somebody responded. From outside. The old bastard's got a flight out, and I want a seat on it. Right, what about Rice? Does he care about this guy? Not a rat's ass. This was my business. I just want to get out of Haran. Yeah, well, looks like you won't be making that flight, huh? That had already dawned on me. But I'd like to walk out of here. Look, if I see you again, I'm gonna assume the worst. You got it? Fair enough. Good luck, Crane. You're going to need it. Did you find them? Yeah, I did. Kareem's take on losing your leg was a bit different than yours. So, you talked to him. Edward was right. You do talk too much. You should leave the talking to people like me, and I'll leave the killing to people like you. However, Kareem was my bodyguard. He allowed me to get bitten, but I don't really blame him for that. Hey, he saved your life. By hacking off my leg? The morning I was bitten was the same day they began dropping suppressants. You understand? I told him the antisin drops would begin within hours. All they had to do was wait. Instead, he listened to that idiot doctor of his, and Karim held me down as the butcher chopped off my leg. Now he thinks I should fly him out of here. Yeah, well, I told him that's not gonna happen. You should have killed him! How about you leave the killing to people like me, huh? Quite right. I can get you out of here, Crane. Maybe I like it here. More likely you've made your own arrangements. Well, they won't work. You've been bitten. I can see it in your eyes. You'll never get past the NCUR quarantine. Past what? You see, you have no idea what's going on in the real world. Whoever you think you know, they're not political. And that's the only thing that's going to work now. You don't believe me? Then think of it as an ace up your sleeve. A backup plan. In case you haven't noticed, things don't always work out the way they're supposed to in this town. 
Right. If I'm interested, what happens next? Two things. The first is we need to paint some markers on the rooftop. There's no paint around here, so you'll have to go out and find some. And the second thing is... Well, let's just say you'll be leaving here in a better way than when you arrived. Now, go find some paint. Right, the roof's been painted. Good. Now there's one last thing. There's a duffel bag in a locker on the second floor. I'd like you to bring it to me. Since you'll probably open it, there's no point trying to hide the fact that there's $24.7 million inside it. One third of it is yours, if you can bring it back. Why doesn't Edward get it? Uh, there are too many biters there. I can't risk losing him. We'd be completely defenseless. And this money's yours? Most of the bank's depositors are no longer human. Stealing from them isn't a crime. Why have you never once taken the wallet of a biter that you've beaten to death? Okay, I'll recover the bag, but there's no calling in the evac until I say so. When I bring back the money, I'm taking the radio. That is unacceptable. Yeah, but you'll accept it anyway, because you have no choice. You're worse than cream. Very well. I accept your terms.
Empty, of course. Sorry, Crane. I had no choice. Kareem said I was a fool to trust you. It's not what you think. I would have taken you with me. I contacted the evac when you were off getting the paint. I had to tell who would be on board, so I gave them your name. Now, I don't know who you are, but they knew, and they said you were a no-go. So I had to send you on that phony money run. There is no money, at least not worth mentioning. I'm sorry, Crane, but I've got to get my family out of here. Go to the rooftop, and we'll find some things you can use. It's not what I promised, but it's the best I can do. Thank you for what you did for us, Crane. Crane, how's your day been? Yeah, I thought we had an understanding. I think we have a better understanding now. But if you want to shoot me... Another time, maybe. He did leave you a few goodies. I was going to nick them, but I thought, no, Crane's earned them. Let him have them. Well, you're almost okay, Kareem. <laughs> almost. Until next time. Good luck, Kareem. Exactly. <laughs>